Hey, high five. Just kidding. We're talking about biometric authentication via handprint. But if you want to come up and tell us, it's really creepy. <laughs>so before we get to the details of the question let's just give a little bit of context right we're trying to configure a hand scanner and why would we want to do that well we're typically doing it for authentication what's authentication well and to understand authentication you have to understand identification identification is when you basically claim an identity right so i can say something like i am sam or Sam I am, you knew that was coming at some point, right? But that's not good enough. Authentication says prove it, because anybody could claim my identity. So I could prove it in a few different ways. I could prove it through a password, something you know, a smart card or a token, something you have, or biometrics, something you are, right? It's a basically physical characteristic that is unique to the person who is trying to be authenticated, right? So that's how it works. Of the three, it's typically considered the most secure, assuming China doesn't have your fingerprints, but that's a whole different quidna for a whole different time. But it's not perfect, right? Because when we configure our biometric devices, we could misconfigure it. So this is what, really what the question is about. So to understand the biometric scanner uh, configuration settings, let's kind of just plot an X and Y axis. But before we kind of do that, there's two types of errors that you need to understand, right? There's an FRR, which stands for false rejection. Now, what does that mean? That means you've been falsely rejected. So you should have been authenticated, but you were actually rejected. Then there's an FAR, which stands for false acceptance, where you should not have been accepted, but you were. So I'm gonna ask you guys, which one do you think is worse? Which one is more egregious? That's right the FAR, right? This one happens all the time when we're trying to log into our smartphones, right? This is an inconvenience or a nuisance, but this, you got a security breach, okay? So the thing is, you could try to control for these two. So on the bottom here, we're gonna talk about sensitivity. Sensitivity is basically just saying, how sensitive do you want your biometric scanner or reader to actually be, how strict? And up here, that's going to affect our error rate, we're talking about these two. So, as we make the biometric more strict or more sensitive, what do we do? We're actually decreasing the FAR. Now, the thing is though, when we increase sensitivity, we are actually increasing what? The FRR, right? Which kind of makes sense, right? Because if you make it more sensitive, it really has to be a perfect match. So those kind of without the matching biometric record won't be accepted as easily. So the problem is, obviously we have a trade-off here between security and convenience. So what the question is asking, what do you do? You are basically setting this up for a data center. What's the best practice? And really, if you think about it, that last detail I mentioned is the detail that's the key to getting this question right. So both, you know, there, there, there could be kind of considerations for both balancing the FRR and the FAR, but the thing is it says data center. What does that mean? Data center, does that hold sensitive data? Absolutely. Would you want to prioritize security or convenience with a data center? Definitely security, right? So what do you want to do? You basically want to decrease the number of FARs, right, or increase the sensitivity. So let's go through our questions here. Do you want to decrease the sensitivity? No, you don't want over here, right? Even though that would have a low FRR, FRR, that is basically, um, that is saying the same thing as C right here, right? But again, we want to prioritize security, not convenience. Do you want to increase the FAR? No, absolutely not, right? That's the opposite. We actually want to decrease the FAR. The only way to do that is to increase the reader sensitivity so you have a low FAR. So here's the problem. When most people teach FRR and FAR and CER, all that fun stuff, they typically just use a static diagram like the one that I showed you, except it's a PowerPoint slide. The thing is at CyberVista, we utilize the light board, right? So what that allows us to do is learning in real time. So when I actually explain that when you tune sensitivity, there's an impact on security, you could actually see it explained in real time. That's gonna help with understanding, retention, and learning. All of our courses are structured around the light board. All of our video on demand, which are basically uh, self-paced videos, and our instructors who are teaching live online are using the light board.
Okay, so hope you learned something. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed the light board. And we'll see you in class. And we'll see you next week on Quitna.